Welcome back. You're still watching Cheche on Citizen TV, the show where opinion counts. We're discussing education reforms. Uh, today in studio, we do have Dr. Andrew Riechi, a policy analyst and senior lecturer in economics of education, Department of Educational Administration and Planning, College of Education and External Studies at the Universities of Ni uh, University of Nairobi. Uh, he is our expert today. But we have Robert Masese, Acting Director General of Basic Education at the Ministry of Education. Uh, let me just sample one or two texts that are coming in on the text line 22422. Remember, you can keep texting us 22422. Many questions coming in. Uh, you can use the hashtag Cheche as well on Twitter for this discussion. One person says, I appreciate the move by the government for the free education program. The problem I have is that the school fees structure is still high because of the many projects in the schools. Uh, another one says, I wish the government can move with speed and absorb non-teaching staff and reduce the burden of personal emolument. Mm. Um, one more, uh, Paris from Nairobi. I'm concerned that in all these reforms, no one mentions the non-teaching staff in the secondary section. Could the government absorb them? They are professionals like any other. You were to react to something <coughs> Charles had said, even as you uh, probably uh, react to this as well. Yeah, I think the, the, the point that uh, Charles raised was on... Uh, the involvement of, uh, of uh, parents in meeting the costs of secondary education mm -hmm. and the fact that uh, if that is not met, then uh, we'll compromise on quality. I think the, the, the questions that have come from, from the public point to some of the things that I was talking about, mm -hmm. that we are progressively as government trying to address what we see to be the, um, one of the contributing factors to the high cost of secondary education. And the obstruction of kids uh, from accessing education. Mm. As to the involvement of parents, uh, you've already heard somebody else is saying that the fees for boarding schools is high. And, uh, and we have gone ahead to ensure that uh, we avail infrastructure support grants to schools so that parents do not have to be burdened more with the, with, with, with the, with the, with the payment for development of infrastructure. You may be aware that uh, last year the government spent about 6.6 .6 billion shillings that was given out to schools countrywide in all the constituencies to prepare infrastructure to absorb the many children who were anticipated to, 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 to join schools mm -hmm. in this 100% transition thing. That is going bound to continue and that um, we don't foresee the presence of many children of Kenya in, uh, in school in any way to be compromising on quality. Besides, what is quality of secondary education? Is it the grades? Mm -hmm. Or is it that you are covering a wide population of children and that they also have, have, uh, have access to education? Are we better off locking out some children to wait on the, on the periphery as we concentrate on a few who are in the system? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. then, then shall we say we are having quality education in our country because the other millions are out there mm -hmm. because we are saying we don't want to compromise quality, or are we better off, or is our, is, is our education of quality if it's inclusive and we are doing the best we can for all of them? Okay. And as you're speaking, Dr. Rich is uh, really agreeing with you. <laughs> you have anything yeah, to add to that? It, the problem with the government <laughs> is it's uh, uh, juggling with equity, yeah. ensuring that all qualified learners or re you know learners in, uh, at different levels of education receive that education. Mm -hmm which is now free and compulsory, at the same time ensuring efficiency in terms of learning processes, which is affected by funding. And, and I said... pleasing the public. And <laughs> No, no, no. no. <laughs> we, we have moved out of it. <laughs> and that now, um, funding is the problem because of the three principles we talked about. Equity, efficiency, and adequacy. So... We need to appreciate the government, uh, you know, the challenge facing the government. <coughs> that it may, whereas it wants, you know, the government <coughs> wants to ensure that all learners uh, at different levels of education have access to that, you know, education. <coughs> at the me. same time, the government doesn't have all the resources. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it's good to keep that balance, but ensure that things are running out. And that's why we cannot... Uh, just look at uh, one aspect of or one reform, if you like, mm -hmm. and forget the others. 
recently the, the you know the CS uh, you know for education uh, came up uh, with a policy to ensure that there is going to be one textbook uh, per subject. Per subject. Mm -hmm. I believe it's <coughs> in both primary and secondary. Yeah. Now that is a good move. It may hurt the publishers, but I, they are in business. Mm -hmm. But that one textbook will minimize the cost on uh, the purchase of textbooks, yes. which is an, an efficiency uh, move. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a move to ensure that the resources are efficiently utilized. So we cannot just uh, complain they are, they are going to, to have more learners in schools when we are forgetting that they're on the other mm -hmm. for the first time uh, the cs is yes. moving with but some bold it's steps. not really it's not really complaining because it, it's just uh, and as we said uh, when, we fearing, fearing. Yes, when we did we started this discussion <laughs> i said we as a uh, general public need yeah. to understand yeah. what exactly we're getting into mm -hmm. what these reforms portend yeah, for yeah. the country and the education yeah, yeah, sector yeah, yeah. yes it is uh, 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 to be applauded mm -hmm. that all the re reforms are being implemented but we also need to be aware that yes there are challenges these are the challenges Correct. this is what will come so that we are not shocked uh, down the line of uh, one two years down the line that, that a we thought this thing was going to work what's happening now mm -hmm. and that's what i want us to tackle now Correct. let's be honest and say yes this is what we expect uh, a few months down the line one two years down the line uh director general what are some of the challenges that we expect okay. with all these reforms <coughs> of course there will be more demand on resources mm. uh, to sustain the program which resources uh, will definitely be availed by government because, as I indicated at the beginning, the one single most important uh, business of government is its children. Mm -hmm. This we cannot uh, bargain about. We are going to, it's going to demand on government to dedicate much more resources towards education to ensure the program succeeds because that's where the future Kenya is. Uh, there is going to be demand for more teachers and you had the CEO mm -hmm. Teacher Service Commission talking about an increase in the recruitment of teachers mm -hmm. to meet the increased uh, enrollment in schools. There is going to be need for uh, uh, revamping science laboratories in schools so that kids uh, leave school <coughs> with, uh, with, a, with a better education. There is going to be the prioritization of the digitization of the using uh, technology mm -hmm. to to ensure that uh, uh, we have better education offered. There is going to be need for us to upscale the skills of teachers by improving their pedagogical skills so that they can be able to, 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 to continuously improve on the quality of education we are giving children. It's not something that government is going to shy off. It's not, it's not something that uh, we can walk away from mm -hmm. because this is the responsibility of government and it's going to meet it and provide uh, that kind of education. As to what uh, um, Doc was talking about, um, <coughs> the new textbook policy of uh, a single course book mm -hmm. per subject per grade, um, that is yet another move by government to ensure that there are books in schools, that um, children that just don't go to school, they don't have adequate textbooks. We are going to ensure that there is a, there is a, there is a uh, one core course book per subject per grade. Every child has their book ready. Come January next year, when from one's report to school, the six course books that the, the the minister talked about will be in place for every child to get and uh, uh, far from what many uh, would want to imagine like uh, doc was almost implying that maybe publishers will be advantaged you may not know the celebration with which uh, publishers are going to or have already met this initiative because they are assured that they are not going to have dead stock in bookshops which is mm -hmm. awaiting buyers mm -hmm. this is you are dealing with one buyer the government of kenya placing their order materials that it requires mm. they don't need bookshops to store them they don't go down manufacture or uh, prepare textbooks and have them to deliver, deliver to schools mm -hmm. so this is going to be a how transparent is that acquisition which one the tra acquisition of books how transparent is it because uh, oh. publishers are going to fi be fighting no no it is uh, competitively uh, it's going to be conducted competitively in any case we are not going to anything new we are going to go to the same publishers whose books are already approved by the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. Mm -hmm. And um, what we have done is that the government has gone ahead and invited uh, quotes from publishers whose books have been approved, mm -hmm. uh, specifically targeting costs 
as the most critical determinant of which book is found to be most competitive. Mm -hmm. And so the books that will be available in schools are those that are most competitively priced. You heard the minister make it clear that uh, the cost of books has now dropped from some which were at 700 to one of them going for about 190 mm -hmm. shillings per textbook. And um, you can see the massive uh, benefit that would accrue from the process. What is it that can be more transparent that, uh, than a, a process that sees that uh, the pricings are, uh, are, 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 are brought down substantially and therefore demanding efficiency on those publishers? And yes. other Does that mean price? therefore schools will not buy, no longer buy books? For, for a start, we are progressive, uh, Madam Tegi. We are saying the, the government is going to give out uh, textbooks, six of them, in the areas of STEM, science, technology, and mathematics, English, and Kiswahili. And then progressively, we will uh, cover the other subject areas. Okay. Yes. Dr. Rich, in, in terms of challenges, mm -hmm. uh, 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 as the Director General put it, uh, he's very optimistic. And mm -hmm. yes, it is good to be optimistic. I am happy for that. Yes, but there are some challenges that are going to come in play, uh, definitely down the line. Yes. One of them, he says, publishers are celebrating right now. We're not so sure about it. Uh, we've seen how cartels previously have reacted to such things. Cartels to do with examination cheating. Mm -hmm. uh, cartels now probably uh, that have been handling publishing businesses. Those could be challenges as well. Mm -hmm. Sustainability of all these reforms as well uh, could be a challenge. We've seen previously some of these policy formulations and if you may allow me to use uh, the example of what happened in the transport ministry a few years back mm -hmm. uh, when uh, the late John Mishuki was in charge of transport ministry, affected a lot of changes in the uh, transportation, public transport in uh, the country. The moment he left that ministry uh, and someone else took over, most of those things were eroded. Yes, that's a challenge also this time around, given the fact that this week and especially this month, we're discussing uh, issues to do with the uh, cabinet okay. positions. If at all, uh, the person of CS, uh, Fred Matiangi, who's credited uh, to actually be spearheading most of these uh, reforms, if at all is reassigned to another docket. That could be a challenge as well. How much of that do you think will affect this? Uh, thank you, Fred. I think uh, we need to uh, pray, like I'm doing, that he is retained in the, uh, in the cabinet and in the docket of education. So you feel if at all is reassigned, this will affect the reforms? That is likely to happen, though given my knowledge about uh, the management of education uh, you know, uh, at the Ministry of Education headquarters, I know they are, uh, they are technocrats. They are people who have worked with uh, Fred and there are structures already uh, to implement uh, these reforms. But my prayer will be uh, if we can be retained. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the major challenge, and are you praying with me? The major challenge. <laughs> I think the whole country is praying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he has, he has start, he has made an impact in clearing the mess in the ministry and taking bold steps, simple things that even do not require money. That visiting schools to to know what is happening mm -hmm. and then taking action when others, you know, uh, learn about it. They are, you know, there, there are many leakages uh, of uh, public funds. In schools and uh, the DG knows uh, that is difficult to plug. Textbooks used to be purchased and uh, a ceremony uh, arranged for parents and stakeholders, villagers to come and see arrive in some schools, mm -hmm. right, during the day. And at night, it's reported, the same, same vehicle that delivered them is used to take them away back to mm -hmm. the bookshops. And the head teachers or the principals of some of those schools, reported schools, uh, confirm that we have textbooks which are not there. Mm -hmm. So what he has started will, uh, will uh, you know, will uh, block some of those. But the, the major challenge will be uh, adequacy of resources to the competing uh, needs. So sustainability, I think, uh, if, if, if the uh, head of state will retain him there, uh, Dr. Matiangi has what it takes to uh, move those reforms forward. And 
Uh, some of them, uh, including the curriculum reforms or the, the competence-based curriculum, are actually coming now mm -hmm. when we should have done that in yes. 1963. Yes. So, so, so I, you agree that um, these reforms are really dependent on one individual? Not necessarily. To, to a higher extent? One individual uh, who has created a system, if it can be retained... Uh, in the next five years, of course, the sector will be different. He talks about problem, you know, f uh, uh, fixing problems mm -hmm. of quality, uh, problem of management, and we pray that he retained. Yes, do you agree with that uh, perception that uh, all these reforms are really dependent on a CS Fred Matiangi staying in that docket of education? And this is a real concern across the country. Um, of course, he provides the, the leadership that um, brings those kind of results. And um, more critical would be for the Kenyan people to embrace the reforms that have come and convert those reforms to be a way of life so that it's a culture mm -hmm. of, of doing things. And, uh, and, 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 and it takes leadership uh, yeah. to to come up with some of those things that uh, reform society. Um, even when you talk about uh, Michuki, Michuki, uh, the reforms in the transport sector didn't completely go away. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, when you when you look around, you see even truck drivers have their safety belts on. <laughs> it was never worse. You see nowadays we, we still have the speed governors uh, mm -hmm. on vehicles. So the reforms initiated by the, the then transport minister did not completely go away and i'm sure that um once we embrace the mm. culture mm. of uh, of accountability in the management of institutions the culture of respecting the sanctity of certificates the culture of respecting national exams and avoiding cheating uh, so that it becomes a way of life this is this is the awakening call that the cs fred matiang has brought to the sector that um ladies and gentlemen we can't continue that way mm. this is not the right way to do things and once that becomes a way of life and we are awakened to it and we choose to follow then this reform but until uh, but until it becomes a way of life charles are you seeing a, a risk here that yes uh Uhuru kenyatta wakes up and changes uh as a reshuffle in cabinet cs machangi is no longer in charge of education that it will totally destabilize all these reforms in the sector. fred i subscribe to the theory of benevolent dictatorship and Fred Matiangi is one person who really exhibits that. Mm -hmm. If I know it's good for you, mm. I will shove it down your throat. You will appreciate me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Case number one, the visit to schools, the mm. impromptu visits. How many people fought it? Mm -hmm. Virtually everybody. Mm. What happened? Teachers started staying in school mm. and teaching. Mm -hmm. What made the policy, what uh, 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 advised the policy on textbooks? He went to schools. He would ask children, this school was given money. Lift the textbooks mm. you have. Mm -hmm. In a class of 60, he finds three children with textbooks. Mm. We have changed. The, uh, some of the writers of the books will complain. You mm. can't satisfy everybody. Look at the case of Kenya National Examination Council. What did people say? Mm. Oh, uh, uh, Mutegi and I sat here with the, some stakeholders in the ministry, and they were really against the issue of... Um, somebody was saying, oh, it, there was no... I don't know whether it's called rationalization of results, something, some terms they use. Yeah. And, and somebody was asking, if a child gets an A, or if a child gets 26, why do you want to make 26 over 100 an A? Mm -hmm. I mean, forget about rationalization. Give a child what they get. And now, what are we looking at? I, I must give credit to uh, uh, Dr. Fred Matiangi. If he's moved out now, it's going to pose one of the major challenges. Mm -hmm. He has a very good... Uh, team of technocrats mm. who need that figurehead. Mm. Uh, mm. The late John Michuki had that team. Mm. You remember there's a time passengers would refuse to board a fully loaded mm. vehicle and say, I am waiting for a vehicle that is free. Mm. What happened? The moment he was moved, we went back to our usual self. So mm. challenge number two is public acceptance. Mm. And this is where I come to challenge number three, which is the most important one for me. Mm -hmm. The moment we bring in politics in our education, mm -hmm. we mess it up. Oh, this gentleman is not from our community. He cannot head our best school. Oh, 
this uh, board chairman, Dr. Riachi, uh, the other day he bought a new Prado. They must be eating our money. I can tell you because I sit in a number of boards for schools, the amount of sacrifice that the board members make in some of these schools. Some of us have to spend our money and travel mm. miles and miles mm. to go and give our input mm. just so that we bring the change. The moment we let politics continue rearing its head, all the effect, these efforts will come to us. Yet the appointment of a cabinet minister is uh, probably the biggest political decision in as far as Precisely. Uh, the he uh, heading the ministry is concerned. But Amutegi, definitely uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, if at all, free secondary education, free day secondary education is part of his legacy. He has to maintain CS uh, Matiang in that pocket. I think he should, and I don't know the reason why he should move. Maybe if he, if he's, he thinks that internal security is more important than education, then we'll put him in internal security. <laughs> but I don't think so. I think he'll retain him there, and we believe, and I pray with you, that he'll be retained. Thank you. For but but thank my you problem you. with uh, one of the things that he's having conflict with uh, the subject we mentioned about bonds. He has said he's going to merge bonds of schools uh, so that you have, uh, if you have a neighboring schools, you have one board, not two boards and one chairman, and uh, one principal, and uh, two deputy, one for primary, one secondary. And the teachers are saying no consultation was done. Is that going to be a major f problem? I don't think it's going to be a major problem on Amutegi and chairman, uh, mm -hmm. because what we are saying is that um, we are uh, copying from some of the best practices within the sector. Mm -hmm. For example, we have some outstanding schools like Moi Forces Academy in Nairobi that uh, runs from ECD to secondary. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, uh, kids in nursery school, mm -hmm. there's kids in primary school, there's a secondary school. And it's in one compound, and it has one principal, one who is in charge of primary, another who is in charge of secondary. And it is running as a unit. Uh, resources are more optimally utilized mm -hmm. instead of having silos within the same institution. Um, uh, you, 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 you are aware that um, when we have <coughs> departmentalized uh, institution, um, even resources that could have been used uh, to affect a wider population of children, like the use of the fields, use of the swimming pools, yeah. and some mm. of the, they are denied because uh, there is ownership, mm. there is perceived mm. ownership by a certain mm. sector, a certain section of the same yeah, school, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we better off. Um, having an over an overall organ the, uh, the management organ, the board of management that oversees the operations, and uh, and we better off coordinated, and we better off as one big unit than segmented, each one pulling in their own direction. That's exactly what informs, and it's not uh, it's not a hypothetical. It's it's being. Well, no, it's not new because when I was at Kenyatta, yes, we used to have Chandra Kimero as a principal, yes, and we have one. Principal for high school, yes. from, from one to from six, yes. and one for teachers. Yes, and and right. yes one Jones and one Evans. Okay. Both of them white men, and, and one principal, Chandra Kimmel, and it, it was one college. Yes. And, it, and I, worked. Dr. Rich, I think, uh, Fred and uh, colleagues, it's, it's, um, it's one of those many initiatives that the Ministry of Education, through Fred Matiangi, is taking to enhance efficiency mm -hmm. in the use of the scarce public resources. However, uh, Bonadigi, I would suggest that uh, before we uh, go full-blown using that model of uh, private institutions or institutions that um, are combined uh, so that there's one board of management, let's, 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 let's see whether we can start uh, pilot, you know, piloting the same uh, before we go uh, full -fledged. you know full-fledged mm -hmm. otherwise it's a good thing uh, the only fear will be if a board meeting is called to discuss issues for the ECDE because they, they are you know there's going to be an ECD center uh, in every public primary school, uh, primary school. Uh, for the primary school issues for the secondary I want to, to imagine, uh, Bonamutegi, that the board meeting is likely to take longer. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to learn those best practices. How yeah. do they go about it? Okay. And as uh, Charles pointed out, we sacrifice. I drive all the way to, uh, to my village once in two months or uh, once in a month. 
to chair the board. Mm -hmm. It's not for any uh, benefits that I receive, other than being gratified that I'm returning. You feel that you've given Yeah, them. I'm making a contribution. And our school, Buana Director, is, I would invite you to <laughs> enter under mixed secondary school. Fred, Fred yes. there's this issue. Yes, Before yes. we take the break, there's yeah. the, the issue of... Uh, public acceptance, the buy-in effect. Yeah. It's a major challenge yeah. that really needs to be looked at. Otherwise, all these very good ideas and policies will keep being um, uh, fought, stifled yes. and yeah. fought and everything. Yes. And one of the, uh, I remember former President Mwai Kibaki uh, around and about the time when free primary education uh, was being fought and being challenged, he stood up one day and said, you're the one who gave birth to this child. Today you keep saying, oh, serikali fanyai, serikali fanyai, serikali fanyai. I will say again, rights come with responsibility. Mm. The government should not shy away from telling parents, you have a responsibility and your mm. responsibility is mm. this. The government should not punish a school head who sends away a child to go home to their parents and collect money to come and feed that child. Mm -hmm. Today... If, doctor, if uh, Mr. Masese finds a child in uniform walking home to go and collect money from a parent who for some reason has not paid fees, the principal or the head teacher of that school is in big trouble. So they make parents have this facade mm -hmm. that we are protected. They tell parents, they tell children that the school cannot retain your certificate even if you have a punitive balance. What happens? Some parents, the moment their child is registered for exams, that is the end of their paying fees. They are done. They are done. Are so they leave the school with that baggage. So okay. public buy-in mm -hmm. is a very big challenge here. Okay. Time for another break. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up this discussion to do with education reforms. But before that, let's sample some of the tweets that you've been sending. The hashtag is Cheche. Uh, we've been looking at some of the texts. Let's have some of the tweets now. Yes, at Lefty Black says, first we need to appreciate the fact that the government has made efforts to streamline the education sector. Uh, it's applause for the government. At Orutwa Sam, and I cannot read that clearly. The other time, the, president, the government of President Kibaki promised us free second education for some uh, uh, At Lefty Blacks as well, family, family, let's flex those brain muscles. Not many people know that the government gives 15,000 to everybody enrolled in the youth polytechnics. Yes. I think uh, Charles, you had mentioned that yes. earlier. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. So there's an, issue, there's an issue of communication as well. Advocacy. At Mbindi of Philip, it is absurd that as the government incorporates the ECDE in the new curriculum, nothing is being done towards pay of tutors. Uh, ECD is uh, at county level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And at Mzalendo Nyak, I think the main problem we have in our education is that if more interest is more interested in passing yeah. not equipping learners with skills it's, it's, it's not, not about, about learners yeah okay well, we'll be looking at some of those and i'll be giving my panelists a final chance to respond to some of these challenges and some of these issues raised by our viewers but that is when checha returns Do you expect? Okay. 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 Ok